and the next topic of our lecture is about rotation and extrusion with the use of the uh, auxiliaries we talked a lot about that aligners are not always good in uh, correcting uh, rotations especially rotations of the rounded round teeth like canines and uh, premolars on upper jaw on upper picture we see their uh, average uh, traffic light of their of uh, achievable rotations without auxiliaries and on the low part we see the uh, range of their rotation with auxiliaries that will also uh, increase our possibilities let's see some clinical examples just in reality if we plan smartly our virtual setup so we don't need any attachment not any additional elements just for uh, the correct uh, 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 planning of the rotation and inclination we can do major aligning so attachments are here only for retention because we use negative attachments here and we do quite a big proclination in the first stage we manage to have the derotation of the incisors on lower jaw on more than 30 degrees also we remember about the negative attachments that can help us to in uh, to enforce the rotation and use them in case of the rotations bigger than 15 degrees another example we see the rotated central incisors and it's obvious we couldn't rotate them around the axis because aligners first of all they would not give us possibility to make bodily rotation because we'll see more inclination so we have to implement this tilt in our setup on purpose and also in the uh, arch there is no space to place incisors so we go in layers first we perform the expansion we uh, 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 procline incisors we do certain uh, stripping and after some checkpoints some control step we start to uh, displace teeth in palatal direction and here we just needed 10 aligners for this kind of correction and no auxiliaries but what could we do if for example something went out of the uh, control and something went wrong for example a very bad rotation we could uh, get from the lateral incisors of aperture especially when the clinical crown is too short so a liner is weakly fixed on the lateral incisor liner would transmit not so much load on lateral incisors so very often these kind of rotations will not be corrected as it happened in this situation so what could we do i bond button that will be the anchorage I bond the button that on the tooth that want to rotate I wrap the elastic chain 360 degrees around this tooth just not to pull it distally because if we just fix the chain on the buckle surface the tooth would be uh, inclined distally but we want to have the rotation moment so we'll wrap the elastic chain around the tooth and doing that so the tooth could rot be rotated and we see that it happened uh, some other clinical cases we see that the central incisor is not completely corrected we want to stimulate this rotation we see that we placed lingual button here is a button for the anchorage on the posterior tooth and what happens the elastic chain is going around the tooth the rotation happens and the tooth is derotated on 15 degrees just in one week another similar clinical case central incisor is not completely rotated uh, you see 
I'm always doing the uh, wrap around of the elastic chain around the tooth. So 418 more degrees. Some clinical examples. They are very similar with each other. We see the uh, anchorage on the button on the posterior teeth and buttons from both sides here because I wrap around the elastic chain around the tooth so not to, uh, 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 not to have displacement of elastic chain from palatal or buccal side. We are forced to place these buttons from both sides. As you see, it's quite an interesting setup here. We placed first elastics on on the bottom of the buccal side, then we uh, put it inside and it will go out of, between the lateral incisor and canine. So uh, in the pal from pelical side not to be displaced from the small lateral incisor, the elastic chain would be underneath the bottom. So the bottom is required only for the uh, 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 preventing of the slipping slippage from the elastic chain. You see the incisor is not completely rotated. so. Uh, as in the last case, we bond two buttons. Uh, as you take notice, we first place the elastic chain on the uh, lingual button, and then we uh, put it underneath the button on the buccal surface, just to have more in a rotation, rotating moment, and the tooth is rotating. And uh, also similar clinical case. How often I change elastic chains? How often I invite patients? Once in four, five, maximum seven days. Usually during this time, the rotation occurs and patients keep on wearing the liners. Uh, another clinical example. So the patient keeps on wearing the liners and the liners have has cutouts. I will show you in several moments how it looks technically. So. Uh, some serious case cases. You see, I use this technique quite an often, and I use it, usually use it, use it for lateral incisors that usually has pro have problems with their derotation. Try to guess which tooth wouldn't be rotated here. So we start the correction. The teeth are displaced in protrusion but on some stage uh, the rotation is not completely uh, performed so we decide to uh, in, um, in the to correct the position of this tooth with the auxiliaries so everything is going quite nice and let's have a look uh, uh, how we perform it technically so there is a patient button for the anchorage on a posterior tooth. You can use a mini screw, but I, I don't see much sense in it. So the button is on lingual side where we fix the elastics. elastic chain is going underneath. No, not like that, I'm sorry. Elastic chain is fixed on buccal button. Then it goes between the central and lateral incisor and then it will go out between the central incisors. So we do uh, the wrap around on 360 degrees. The more angle of the rotation of the tooth around its axis, the more effective would be our correction of the rotation. So it's not, it's not that will be pulled towards the position of the button on the uh, uh, sixth row. Sixth it will have the uh, bodily derotation. Just have a look at it in closer look. Take notice, please, how it looks like with a, a fixed liner. So we have cutouts in the area of the buttons. So during the uh, fixing of the liner, the liner wouldn't be uh, in contact with buttons. And patients do not uh, do not remove these elastics. We remove them by ourselves. So with uh, with scissors, we can do these cutouts on the liners. And in one maximum two weeks, we could get the necessary amount of the rotation. 
patient uses a liner in a normal uh, regime, normal rules. So, uh, because if the patient would, wouldn't use a liner, the, the tooth would be uh, moving uncontrollably. Un uh, another clinical case with the correction of the rotation with elastics, you see that the lateral incisor did not rotate as it often happens. So, once again, take notice that uh, elastic chain go out between central incisor and lateral incisor and lateral incisor and canine so the uh, rotation will be of rotation force 116 degrees 60 degrees first we fix it on minimal bottom they put it between the central and uh, lateral incisor then around the the palatal side underneath the button if it could be fixed without button is good if not then we'll fix the palatal button and then we go out on the buccal surface between lateral and, uh, 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 and canine and i do the maximal stretch and i use closed elastic chain and so the tooth is corrected here we uh, uh, didn't require to fix palatal button. The elastic chain is quite nicely fixed without palatal button. See, you can see how uh, its vector is going. So it goes almost on 360 degrees. That's how we get the bodily rotation instead of the tipping. Uh, uh, by the way, we could combine this moment for example, with the distillation of the canine. How I draw on this uh, drawing here at the same time, I was, uh, correct, I was correcting the rotation of the lateral incisor using the same scheme, schema that I've showed you before. So when we you use the elastic chain between central incisor and lateral incisor, then we go, it goes out between lateral incisor and canine. And uh, the elast uh, elastic chain is pushing on the canine. It's, we have a distal vector, so we can use it also with the help of the elastic chain to move canine a little bit distally. So I recommend you to use this kind of technique in these clinical situations. And about the rotation of the canines. Canines are different from the incisors from uh, without attachments, their rotation would be quite problematic. Even with attachments, it's sometimes not very successful. And very often we have to use auxiliaries. For example, here you can take notice that uh, not taking in consideration that uh, initial amount of the uh, liners, the amount that are perf uh, performed by the lab, it's finished, but the canines didn't uh, derotate even one degree. So I placed mini screws, I used quite a stretched elastic chain and finally I could get the final position of the canines that I required. Take notice please, these changes happened just in four days. The main thing not to lose this moment and stabilize canines just not to have immediate relapse. One more clinical case also canines didn't rotate. I placed mini screws. So the canines, the rotation complete. There. I use uh, archwise on the right side Locatelli uh, spring just to have the space for the implant placement in the first segment and the final result with temporary crowns after the orthodontic correction. Just take notice that using the same scheme, mini screw, I decided not to uh, use first and second mold because there was a risk of their mesial uh, displacement. We have one missing tooth, so I decided to uh, use Anchorage. On mini screw. And that I use this technique quite often. when I do corrections with braces and aligners just for creating space quite quickly. Very nicely working out technique. Uh, uh, 0 uh, 0.12 arch wire that is compressed and then bonded to the 
teeth. Another example of the correction of the rotation of the canine. We try to rotate it with a liner. We're talking about tooth number one, three. Nothing happens. Lower teeth are aligning. And just for helping uh, to help the uh, canine to derotate and to displace it buccally, we use the technique already known to us. The, num uh, the first molar would be the anchorage. And because of these uh, a, a power elastic chain so it, it's not only the derotation but the buckle displacement on lower jaw we did the rotation of the center incisor we have the 360 degrees rotation of the elastic chain around the tooth if I would just place the elastic chain on the buckle button I would just get the distal inclination of the crown and here I need to have the bodily rotation the canine moves, turns, and gets this moves buccally, and then we wait for the prosthodontic treatment. One more interesting example. With the rotations of the canine. And also here is the effect of the watermelon seed. I didn't do enough separation. You see that the rotation uh, goes nicely, the canine turns, rotates, but goes to the arch. But what happens? Because we didn't create enough space. Uh, we, uh, we didn't have enough space in the proximal context. The tooth uh, goes in intrusion and moves upwards. So what we have to do? Uh, we can use auxiliaries again, for example, triangular elastics. And then the patient wears these triangular elastics just to compensate the uh, effect of the watermelon seed. As you can notice, we managed to have very nice rotation on 15-20 degrees, but we had to lose time to correct the position of the intruded canine. What kind of conclusions we could get from this block about rotations? how we have to derotate incisors and canines and even premolars and molars with the use of the auxiliaries first of all we need to have an anchorage usually an anchorage could be uh, from a posterior teeth or mini screws we do cutouts uh, for the buttons in the arch there has to be space for the teeth where the teeth would be placed just not to have the load, uh, you know, in blanks, as we call it. Just we need to make sure that the tooth can be aligned in the arch. A liner has to be used by the, uh, by the patient in normal uh, range. And the frequency of control follow-ups and replacement of the elastic chains I recommend to do once in a week.